God is good. Man, I just want, I, you guys are like I, all sitting down and I want to run. Um, I, like if I just take off running, that's just the Holy Spirit just to let you know. Um, you know, we're a little crazy like that sometimes. Um, praise the Lord. Somebody said, you feel like running, you better run. Don't just say that, Pastor. Trust me, if I really want to run, I'll run. But sometimes God says, run in your spirit and keep preaching. Amen. But I want to preach a little bit from the word of God today. Is that all right if we read the scriptures outside together? Amen. We're going to get into the gospel according to John. And it's later on in the text, right before Jesus goes to the cross. And it's in John chapter 17. And uh, it's a real powerful text. And the beautiful thing about John 17, it really is reflective of the times that we're in because it's all about unity. Everybody say unity. unity. And how many know we're living in a time where there's a lot of division? Yes. There's a lot of things that the enemy's trying to cause separation between brother and sister, between brother and brother, between brother and uh, child and father. And there's a lot of issues that are going on at hand. Look at your neighbor and say, a lot of issues. Lot of issues. Amen. But how many know that God is bigger than the issues? And how many know that God is bigger than any other problem that we see? And how many know that God sees the problem long before we ever see the problem? And that he's all in control. And sometimes we might be on plan B, but God is always on plan A. He's never taken by surprise with anything. This pandemic didn't surprise him. This racial injustice, it didn't surprise him. The things that are going on and the, the walks and the movements and the pandemics and the, the drug addictions and the struggles that we're facing as a community in Vermilion, Ohio, it didn't take God by surprise. He's not on plan B. Look at your neighbor and say, get on God's plan. But well, how many know that Jesus was always on God's plan? Amen. I think I'm just going to have to shut this and just preach it today. Amen. And I'll tell you what, um, I, I want to read from the gospel according to John in chapter 17, because this is a prayer. And I'm going to keep it short because I like to get to work today. I don't want to put you to sleep and make you just think about food. We do have very hearty and healthy hot dogs for you afterwards. And some chips and some some drinks and uh, if you want to have some food with us afterwards you can we're gonna go on ahead and get busy though praise the Lord somebody was saying how do I give to church well today I, we're not taking up a, a, a an offering but if you really want to give amen just just uh, let me see uh, see see brother Paul where are you at Paul raise your hand just you can you can give to him and he'll, he'll take care of it as a treasurer today he's the official treasurer for the day hallelujah and uh, and if you want to do that you don't have to but if you feel a need in, in your heart Feel free to do that, but you can give online. Our leadership knows what it means to, to give online and, and to be faithful tithers, and we're just thankful that God is supporting us and able to take care of us. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and so we're not, we're not in desperate need for that, but we definitely will always appreciate it. Hallelujah. So if you're giving a thousand is spelled with a T, amen. Praise the Lord. John 17, and I want to read three verses today, but as we look at this text, there's a couple of spots that stand out to me. And I just want to reflect on those before we get into this, because this is a, a prayer that Jesus prays to God to bring about unity. Can you hear me in this microphone? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says here in verse eight of this particular passage, he says, listen, Father, I have given them the words. I have given them the things that you want them to know. I have told them what it means to be a follower of God. And I pray that they have received them. Look at your neighbor and say, have you received the word? In the same text, in verse 11, he says, Now I'm no longer in this world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, that you would keep them through, sorry, that you would keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to be one. But how many know being one doesn't mean just being of one mind? It also means being of one surrender. It means that we have surrendered to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The one thing that unifies us here today is that we all believe in Jesus. Amen. I mean, I think all of us believe in Jesus. Amen. If you don't believe in Jesus, welcome to church. Hallelujah. We'll talk to you about that. But the one of the unifying factors is here right now is that we've been brought together under the banner of God's love. And how many of us know that we're all God's children? It doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, if you're Jew, if you're Gentile, if you're woman, if you're male. We're all God's children. And everybody matters in this place. And God wants us to realize that we need to value every person. 
that we need to make sure that we see them as God sees them. Jesus says, listen, this is one of my final prayers, and I want everybody in the community of faith to get this because I'm about ready just in a couple of hours to go to the cross. And God, this is my prayer. This is the moment. This is outside of the Garden of Gethsemane. He's already said, I already drink the cup you want me to have. But Father, this is my last and my final request. I pray for unity within your people. I got one amen out of that. That's good preaching, Pastor. Amen. Keep on preaching. I want you to be unified. I want them to be one, Father God, as we are one. I want them to understand that I have a, uh, that they have a calling and a place. Listen, there's faith, there's hope, there's love. But unity is a smooth ground for us to walk on. It allows us to do what God has called us to do within the community of the faith. And we need to be unified no matter what. And there's many things that the enemy wants to cause division on. And some of you are getting so divided because you can't get off Facebook. I can throw the mic. <laughs> really, we, we got to get off Instagram. Get off social media. Cut it out of your life for a moment. And just wake up and don't worry about what the charge is that everybody else is asking you to take. Take the word of God. This is your charge. Wake up. Love your brother and your sister. Do good. Do justice. Love mercy. Walk humbly with your God for the rest of your days. Do as God commanded. And this is what Jesus is praying. Can I go a little bit further? Hallelujah. Verse 15 says, verse 15. Check, check. Check. Put me up, son. Oh my gosh. Check, check. Battery down. Sorry. Amen. God wants me to stand still. <laughs> verse 15 says this I don't pray that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them in the world, but you should keep them from the evil one. How many know that there's a real battle going on? And it's not always just humanity, but there is a real spirit of antichrist over this world that's causing division. I like this mic better anyhow. <laughs> and, and maybe he just wanted it to be clear right there. Because a lot of people have been to church, but you never heard about the devil. A lot of people have been to church, but you never heard about the spiritual warfare that's going on. Because a lot of times it's just, God, I'm a good person. I'm doing everything right. Why is everything coming against me? Because there's a devil. Amen. There's an enemy that wants to attack you. Right. There's a spiritual warfare over your life. And God said this, Jesus said this, Father, I pray that even though I'm leaving the world, that you keep them in the world. But I don't care if you got to keep them here. The one thing I pray that you keep them from is you keep them from the evil one. Isn't it, isn't it even in his prayer request, he said, teach us how to pray. He said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? And in one portion, he says this, deliver us from evil. And deliver us from the evil one. Keep us away. Because why? Jesus recognized that there's a spiritual war going on over your life. And there's a spiritual war going on over the lives of his children and his family and over this region. And we about to take it back. Oh. Come on. Run. Let's go. <laughs> but Father, we pray that they may be one as we are one. But there's three principles here found in the first three verses of John 17. And I'm just going to read those now that I'm done with my intro. <laughs> Jesus spoke these words and he lifted up his eyes to heaven. As he always did as a Jewish man, this was a way that they prostrated themselves before the Father and they would look up to heaven. That's why I like when I'm worshiping, I like to look up to heaven. And he says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may also glorify you. The first principle that I want you to get from this particular text is that Jesus was always in the Father's will. That Jesus always did whatever the father did as a matter of fact he said i never say what he tells me not to say I, I say only what he wants me to say where you go i'll go what you do i'll do what you say i'll say what you want me to be i'll be he says i'm going to remain in the presence of god and if we're going to have victory and we're going to have unity the first thing that we have to do is surrender our daily routine to the king of kings and the lord of lords and we have to say god i must remain in your glory and in your presence the other day somebody was saying man i feel like i'm in, I, i'm falling apart my life is is not going well and and things are happening and i, I and I feel nervous and I have anxiety. But how many know when you rest in the presence of God, you can rest in comfort? 
You can rest in his presence and know that he has you in the palm of his hand. Verse 2 says this, as you have given him authority over all flesh. Sorry. He says, glorify your son. Verse 2, he says, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. Verse 3, and this is eternal life that you may know that the only one true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Amen. Number one, he wants us to remain in God's presence. Jesus remained with his father, whatever his father wanted him to do, he stayed in his presence. Number two, Jesus was the light. Everybody say he was a light. He was, a light. He was surrounded by the light. Somebody said on Facebook the other day, I feel like I'm going into a dark place, Cassidy, right? I feel like I'm slipping back, but Jesus is the light. And if you remain in the light, the darkness can't comprehend it and it can't remain. I've never seen a darkness problem. I've only seen a light problem. There's never been a time where you switch, hit the switch and darkness refuses to go. It doesn't happen. When you turn on the light, the darkness has to leave. And the light is the cross of Christ. The light is the word of God. The light is your worship. This is how I fight my battles. Right? It's, I get on my knees and I begin to cry out to God and I begin to worship God and I get in his presence because when the darkness is around me, I've got to surround myself with the light and turn on the switch. Look at your neighbor and say, turn it on. It's time. It's time that we turn the switch on and start conquering the darkness ourselves. And the third thing that Jesus did was this. This is the best. This is the greatest. Already, I'm about to drop the mic. Deep Thoughts by Pastor Josh. Are you ready? He said that they would understand eternal life. Woo! Yeah, come on. See, when you realize that you were born to die, you're not afraid of COVID. That's right. When you realize that death is going to happen, you don't have to worry about it every day. When you realize... <laughs> I hit the button. When you realize that eternal life is at hand, it doesn't matter because this is just fleeting. It's just momentary. It's light. It isn't the old hymn that says, as this world grows strangely dim, the cross before me, the world behind me, there's no turning back, no turning back. Why? Because I press on towards the prize. Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. I have a destination. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. I don't have time to get wallowed up and look at all the things that are surrounding me in this area, in this region, and worry and cry and moan and have anxiety. Why? Because I trust in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And even if I go to the furnace, I still won't bow my knee to Baal because I have a desire to worship God because he's able to deliver me out of the problems that I'm facing and even if not to live as Christ and to die is gain see the problem is that so many people get scared and afraid God I, I, I want to go to heaven but I don't want to go tonight prop me up by the jukebox it's any moment the eastern sky is going to split it's any moment Jesus is coming back <laughs> This building is just a tackle box. It's just a place to do the work until we go home. But the work is outside of the building. The work is being a building, not building a building. The work is, is going and loving our brothers and sisters and living in unity and being one as he ordained us to be. Listen to me, listen to me, because some families right now are even facing division. And the devil will always try you, tell you that you need something more than what he's given you. He'll always tell you you need something better, something greater. That something else should have been that way or this way. And, and you fail to realize the preciousness that is in your hand and the gift that God has given you. Hallelujah. Where's Daryl at? My, bro my black brother. He's one of the few here. Maybe the only one. I saw him. I saw him. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, this, this is how we have to be. I, I'm ready for integration to come to Vermillion. I'm ready for change. I'm ready to see different. I want to see, man, this would be great. Puerto Rican, Chinese. We, we have the best food. 
It's time that we start praying change in our area. But it's first that we submit our heart to the king. Because I don't care whether you're black, white, Puerto Rican, anything. If you haven't submitted, two can't walk together unless they agree. And this is the banner by which I live. This is the banner by which I move. This is the banner by which I have my being. Together, we're going to go forward, family. And I'm so blessed. Let me tell you something. I told my leaders this a little while ago. When we started this church, we started 12 years ago in this very building. In the same room where orange carpeting is, where we'll be there until somebody helps us pay for gray carpeting. We will go from 1970 to 2020. Then our children will change it back to orange. But the greatest thing that I found when I was in there with them praying was that I was surrounded by warriors. When we started, we didn't necessarily, we had a group of people, but we didn't have an organized structural team. And we have been developing and growing that team and learning how to administer and, and, and lead that team. And we're still growing in that. But the greatest thing is, is that we actually have a team now. And the place that we were renting for and struggling in, we're now buying, hallelujah. And we're going to move forward. And we're going to help the next people coming up behind us and the next generation. And it's going to leave a legacy, I believe, until the Lord returns, if he prolongs. Amen? So I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for being a worker. Thank you for being a servant of God. And let me say this. This building requires everybody. If you, how many of you can say, I've been blessed by this ministry? Amen. 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 It's time to be the ministry. That's right. It's time to do the work. It's time to make it happen. Amen. It's time to show up when nobody else wants to show up. It's time to put your foot forward. It's time to put your energy and your time and your talent and your treasure where your voice is. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. And it's time for us to work together because, listen, now you've all been ordained. Every one of you is a minister of the gospel. Every one of you is administration. Every one of you is a laborer. Every one of us has a job to do. And today, we're going to do some simple stuff. We're going to work outside. We're going to do some yard work. You are allowed to troubleshoot. Can you believe that? Somebody says, what's that mean? You see it needs done and just want to do it, do it. Hallelujah. Except for Tony, I gave him a job. And... And, uh, and if you have questions, Brother Ray, I'm going to put him in charge. Raise your hand right here. He, he so willingly just volunteered his hand. And if you have questions, he, he has a lot of insight. Him and I were talking a little bit, and he's even allowed to troubleshoot. Hallelujah. We're all just, let's get this done. There are some things inside that need moved. And that's one thing I was talking to Ray about is we need some big guys to move some heavy equipment into the gym so that we can get our sanctuary up and running. And even if we have to rock the orange carpet, it will be a clean orange carpet. Amen. 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 And so we will get in there and do that uh, if, if we have rain. Hallelujah. But how many of you are ready to start doing some work today Amen. for the kingdom of God? Amen. If you can't stay, that's all right. We understand. Um, we'll talk about you. But... Um, <laughs> It, it's no i'm just kidding you can hang out and and have a good time and uh, listen there's some people i know they have some plans and they told me this week they do and they'll be here next week hallelujah but every sunday that we come together for the next probably couple of months throughout the summer plan to stay after and help plan to work plan to do something you can't always do it every week but set aside one on your calendar you pick it out and we'll have a new direction every week on Sunday. It will be the simplest way for us to complete our tasks at a larger group because we're already here. Amen? Amen. And somebody says, well, I can't believe that. I always, I always try to look nice on Sunday and relax. Suffer for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put your hair up in a bun. Hallelujah. Get your mask. Get your gloves. Whatever it is that you need to do, let's get busy. Let's take care of what God has given us. Amen. And let's go to another level. And next week, make sure you invite a family and friend. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you have been